NASCAR is still the reigning kings in terms of motorsports in America. Sorry, Formula One. NASCAR and 2311 Racing slash FRM have actually agreed on something in their lawsuit. More on that in a second. Plus, we break down the NASCAR tier rankings going into Homestead. <laughs> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. So of course, everybody saw the news that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is bringing back the number eight, not just the number eight, but the bud number eight at that. People are ecstatic, they're celebrating in the streets. It was a national day of celebration down in the South. People were very excited about it. The people that are probably the most excited about it though are the people that got the Dale Earnhardt Jr. number eight tattooed on their forearm, their thigh, their chest, wherever they may have gotten it tattooed at, they are absolutely stoked to see that number eight back on track with Dale Earnhardt Jr. behind the wheel. All the people that went out there and got that uh, Hendrick Motorsport stylized number 88 are probably pretty pissed today. They're running full tilt like a Peterbilt trying to try to get that baby erased and get the old number eight slapped on to their arm or wherever they may get the tattoo at. Either way, it is very cool to see the number eight coming back. It's very cool to see the whole uh, merch line that they rolled out over at JRM as well. It just might be a bit of a nightmare for the people that got the number 88 tattooed on them. In today's news though, starting off with the TV ratings coming out of this past weekend. NASCAR and Formula One went head to head, both of them on network, which is a great gauge for everybody to kind of see who has what audience going forward. Now, Formula One, of course, is a much shorter race. It started about 10 minutes after 10, 11 minutes after the NASCAR Cup Series race from Las Vegas went green, and then it ended substantially sooner than the NASCAR Cup Series race, and I'm not mad about that. However, NASCAR scored 2.3 million viewers on NBC this weekend for the first race of their round of eight, the semifinals leading up to the championship race at Phoenix. Of course, Joey Logano won. He locked himself in. 2.3 million viewers for NASCAR this weekend on NBC. Over on ABC, like I said, at roughly the same time period, Formula One drew 1.3 million viewers. So NASCAR was still a full million viewers ahead of Formula One on Sunday as the two of them went head to head. For both series, they both gained over their 2023. Three uh, editions of these races. For NASCAR, it was 2.19 million viewers last year. It was 2.3 this year. For Formula One, it was 1.2 last year. It was 1.3 this year. So essentially, both of them gained about 100,000. NASCAR getting just a tick more than what Formula One had in terms of more viewers coming around this year. I know people are going to constantly tell us that Formula One is the most popular form of motorsport in America. It's just not in terms of TV rating. Is it in terms of like social impressions? Yeah, probably. Probably at this point, I would argue that it definitely is. Of course, it has the driving force behind it of Dry to Survive. And NASCAR's full speed uh, on Netflix will have a second season probably coming out at the end of January, early February of 2025. And that's really when Drive to Survive took off for Formula One, was in that second and third season of the show. Of course, they had a global pandemic that maybe helped out there and people were stuck in their homes. But in NASCAR's case, hopefully the momentum that came from the five episode first season will be carried over into what, however many episodes the second season is. And it's certainly not a bad thing to have a Netflix show like that. But for everybody that continues to say that Formula One is going to overtake NASCAR, when you have a comparable data set like this, where both of them are on network television essentially at the same time, you can kind of see that NASCAR continues to be the biggest powerhouse in terms of TV rating in motorsports in America. I will, however, say that the chances are the 18 to 34 year old demo for Formula One was definitely stronger than what NASCAR's was. I don't have the data for the Formula One side in front of me, so it's not fair to compare them at this time. But traditionally, over the last two years, the Formula One 18 to 34 year old demo, 18 to really even 49 year old demo has outweighed and outscored what the NASCAR demo has at the same time. So that's an area that NASCAR continues to try to push for. We see them roll out, you know, younger marketing campaigns. They are starting to sponsor more things that are in that 18 to 34, 18 to 35 year old demo, uh, which is good. That's definitely where the sport needs needs to have its its focus on and hopefully we start to see that demo grow up a little bit more but NASCAR 1 million more viewers this weekend than Formula One at the same time both of them on network television if you're hoping to get your hands on some sweet sweet financial information coming out of this NASCAR and 2311 FRM lawsuit well, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. You might wanna go grab a fun dip, get your fix from that because you're not probably going to get much of it, which is a bummer, right? But I completely understand why that's not 
happening. So going into Wednesday, uh, the teams at 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports are going to respond to NASCAR last week saying that the teams don't need this injunction to have their charters because they've already said they'll race as open cars. The teams are going to respond to what NASCAR said last week on Wednesday, but going into it, both NASCAR and the two teams, 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports, agreed to redact certain information from the court filings, at least what will go public um, or be released to the public, which makes a lot of sense. NASCAR was uh, very concerned about, you know, redacting certain parts of the 2015 or 2016 rather charter agreement, as well as the 2025 charter agreement, which again, when you hear the explanation, I understand it. NASCAR's reasoning, according to Matt Weaver over at SportsNot, uh, who did a great write-up on this, is that the documents contain highly sensitive uh, commercial information. So we're talking about revenue, sponsorship, uh, financials, a lot of things where NASCAR wouldn't really like that to get out there, and the teams necessarily don't want that to get out there um, either. So it comes down to a lot of the financials, the revenue behind it, um, and especially sponsorship agreements as well. You don't want to have one sponsor see, oh, they're only paying that much. We're paying this much over here. We're essentially getting you know the same thing or maybe not the same thing, and you don't want to have to have those conversations going back and forth. So I understand why it was redacted, of course, in the court filings that will go in front of the judge and to the two you know legal teams. It will not be redacted in there. They are all both very aware of, especially the charter uh, financial information that comes along with that. But when it does get released out to the public, they'll redact certain parts of it, like it's the Kennedy investigation or anything that talks about Area 51 or UFOs or uh, whatever Tom DeLong is pursuing this week in terms of things flying around the sky. So we're not going to get all the information that we possibly want out of it, but we should at least get the teams on Wednesday at some point replying back to what NASCAR said last week, where NASCAR is like, hey, they don't need an injunction for their charters because they've already said they'll race without them. So clearly they don't actually need them. I said last week, I think that might hurt the teams. I still think that that could not have hurt the teams, but we'll at least get the explanation from the teams, hopefully on uh, Wednesday, hopefully maybe at the latest by Thursday, we'll have that information. Moving into our tier rankings for the week, headed into Homestead. Who has the best shot at getting to the final four at Phoenix? Eight drivers remain, one driver is locked in. Let's go through the list, starting off with with Joey Logano, it feels like 2022 all over again. In his two previous championship runs, he won the first race of the round of eight and then goes on to win the championship. Well, guess what? On Sunday at Las Vegas, he won the first race of the championship. Once again, it doesn't feel like 98 down in Knoxville anymore. Sorry, Tennessee Volunteer fans, but it is starting to feel a lot like 2022 again for Joey Logano. Moving down the rankings list, we have Phoenix bound. Is Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, and William Byron already shoo-ins for Phoenix, they both, all three of them rather, have very comfortable leads for the most part, especially Christopher Bell, who could lock in just on points this weekend at Homestead if he has two really good stages, and Kyle Larson's not terribly far behind him. William Byron is a little bit further down at only plus 27, but he still has a really comfortable lead headed to a racetrack where he has a win at. And speaking of him having a win there, both Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell also have wins there in the Gen 7 era. Then we get to Denny Hamlin, who once again is in the category of could be a contender, but he's Denny Hamlin. That's the problem for Denny Hamlin. The 11 team needs to go out there and score a lot of points. However, we're getting into the three races uh, of the schedule where the 11 team continually finds a way to mess things up, whether that be last year with the steering issue at Homestead. Now, he could go to uh, Martinsville and absolutely win that race, or he could go to Martinsville, feel like he's going to be in, and then all of a sudden some crazy watermelon man from Florida in typical Florida man fashion just puts it against the wall, floors it like he's in a video game, and put, puts himself into the championship race, knocking out Denny Hamlin in the most unforeseen fashion we've ever could have imagined. And then you get to Phoenix, say he does make it to Phoenix. Then Denny Hamlin has to perform under pressure, and we traditionally don't see him do that. So could be a contender, but mm, he's Denny Hamlin. Into the Homestead or a bus category, there's one resident that would be Tyler Reddick. I think Homestead is Tyler Reddick's last legitimate chance to just win his way in. I don't see him going to Martinsville and winning that race. He is very good at Homestead. He did win two Xfinity Series championships at Homestead as well, just going up there and ripping the wall. If he's going to make it to Phoenix, I think he has to have an absolute career day. 
at Homestead on Sunday. And then into the last category, the no longer frisky and now desperate category. You have Chase Elliott and you have Ryan Blaney. They're both not frisky anymore. Sorry to all their legions of fans out there, both fanboys and fangirls alike. They're not frisky anymore. And they're actually flirting on uh, borderline desperate. At, uh, at this point, both of them are going to need wins to get into the championship Four, both of them, unfortunately, got caught up in that accident with Tyler Reddick on Sunday at Las Vegas. I saw Reddick do a barrel roll down the front stretch, and now they're going to Homestead where they're going to have to win. They're going to Martinsville where they're going to have to win. Neither of them have ever won at Homestead in the Cup Series. Both of them have won at Martinsville in the Cup Series. So it could be a pretty interesting Martinsville when we get down to it, or it could be pretty boring. Right now, I'm going to borderline on we're going to home or we're going to Martinsville in two weeks' time with one spot realistically remaining open for somebody to try to grab. And man, it could be very interesting when we get there. So let me know in the comments what you think about the ratings between NASCAR and Formula One this past weekend. NASCAR in 2311 Racing and FRM deciding to redact certain information, which I think is logical, as well as the tier rankings for this week. Like and subscribe to the channel. Oh, before we leave real quick, if you've noticed the description uh, of the video for my last two videos, I've included a link to a GoFundMe on there for Ryan Thacker. Ryan is a race fan like yourself, like myself, going through a bit of a hard time right now. Um, he has some health issues, some chronic health issues that are going on. Uh, he's got insurance to help cover, has some surgery recently on his uh, shoulder. He's been out of work for a little bit. So you can check out what Ryan says in his description right there. If you feel inclined, by all means, uh, donate as well. Like I said, he's a very nice guy. He and I converse back and forth on DMs uh, on TikTok on a fairly frequent basis. And he just likes race cars, uh, just like you and I do. So check that out. Also, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.